Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Before we get into this lesson, sisters and brothers, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up. We're going to stand and face the temple in Jerusalem. Heavenly Father, O oh great God of Israel, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the safety of our brother Eric coming down here. Father God, we're enjoying these days together that you've provided. And Father, today we dedicate this day to you, the Sabbath day. Lord, we just ask that you open our hearts and give us whatever it is that you would have us see and hear. For these blessings and all blessings, we thank you in the name of your beloved son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Once again, sisters and brothers, welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Today, to the best of our calculations, it's the second month, the 13th day of the year 5778, and it happens to be the 12th day of the fifth month, or May 12th, according to the Gregorian calendar, 2018. Sisters and brothers, the title of today's lesson is going to be Convictions of the Heart Lead to Salvation. And today we have our brother... Eric Burkholz is going to be reading for us, and he's from Open Arms um, in Berlin, Wisconsin. Open Arms Congregation in Berlin, Wisconsin, and we'd like to welcome all those that are watching us from there today. Welcome and happy Sabbath. Again, the title of today's lesson is Convictions of the Heart Lead to Salvation. Convictions of your heart lead to your salvation. Convictions of my heart lead to my salvation, but it's all according to one standard, God's word. But there are some areas where you can't stand on someone else's faith, and that's what we're going to deal with today. We're going we're gonna to deal with not standing on someone else's faith, but standing on your own faith. The only person that has to stand on someone else's faith is a wife has to stand on her husband's faith if they're both grounded and rooted in Christ. Because the head of the house is the husband, and the husband, or the head of the house, is what sets the way the house worships. So if it's not contrary to the word of God, it's not abominable in his eyes, even though you may not agree with it completely. Like I know a lot of sisters, the head of house says, you got to cover your head. Okay? He sees it in the scripture. You might not fully see it, but the head of house is asking you to cover your head. As long as you're married to that man and you're bound to him, you must cover your head. Even though you might not be convicted that you have to cover your head, but the wife has to do what the husband says because the husband's the head. But what if you don't have a husband? What if you're a young sister in the word or you're a widow? Or you're just anyone that's not bound to anyone but Christ? You have to walk in your faith. Not someone else's. And that's what this is all about today. And we're going to start this off in Romans, the 14th chapter. Romans, the 14th chapter. Beautiful day the Lord has blessed us with today. Yes, it's been a beautiful week. All week of Brother Eric's been here. And the fellowship has just been off the chain, sisters and brothers. Romans 14. Romans 14. And brother, if you'll start off this lesson, we'll start in verse 22. 14 and 22. Go ahead. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Hast thou faith? And faith is what? It's belief. Your faith is your belief. That's why the Lord says you show that by the way you conduct yourself or the way you speak. By your works. Okay? Works is not a bad word. Oh, works. Oh, it's a works doctrine. No. You show your faith, which is belief, by the way you conduct yourself. If you believe the Messiah... Where he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You find out what his commandments are. He's, quote, the covenant. You keep the covenant. And to be Christ-like means to conduct yourself as Jesus did. He kept the Sabbath day and the feast days and the dietary law and everything. That's all part of inclusive of the covenant. But I'm preaching to the choir. We know that. Verse 23, brother. Or I'm sorry, continue in 22. Happy is he that condemneth not himself. In that thing which he alloweth. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. In other words, he's walking according to his faith. And we'll show this as you go on. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, 
Because he eateth not of faith. And I'm not even looking for this part of the scripture. He that doubteth the damned of eat because he eateth not of faith. This is talking about whether or not you eat meat or, or, or one's a vegetarian, one eats meat or whatever. We're not even going there. That has several different ways you can go. What we're concerned about is the next sentence. Go ahead, brother. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, if you're living in someone's house or within their gate and they're laying down godly laws, then you're bound by that gate. But when you get out on your own, you are bound by your faith, not someone else's faith, especially that of your pastor or your elders. They are to lead and guide you in the word so that the Holy Ghost can give you understanding. That's straight scripture. I don't care how you're doing it in whatever congregation you're at. That's the way it's supposed to roll. Let's continue. Let's go to Romans, the fifth chapter. Back it up a couple of books. And I'm, I've got to pick this up or I'm going to be here all afternoon. Romans 5. Yeah, Brother Paul, you better pick it up now. You know how you love to talk. Romans 5, and we'll start it off at verse 1. We're going to read 1 and 2. Romans 5 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified means cleared of guilt. We're cleared of guilt by our faith in Jesus Christ because he's that atoning sacrifice. Go ahead, brother. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand. And we have access by faith in Christ into the grace wherein we stand. Because when we sin, we should have died. Grace is, it's a free gift. God didn't kill us when we sinned. He didn't require our blood at the time we sinned. He gave us the opportunity to come to know him and how he would have us serve him. And that's grace. Okay, sisters and brothers, let's make sure we understand what grace is, okay? That is what grace is. So we have access by faith in Christ into this free gift or this grace wherein we stand. Go ahead, brother. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And rejoice, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. In other words, we hope that we keep our under the covenant. When he returns, he'll give us his reward or our reward from him. Let's continue. Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. And brother, we're going to pick this up at verse 4. Ephesians 2. And verse 4. Go ahead. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, uh -huh. even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. That's that grace. We're dead in our sins, and he still gives us, he still gives us that shot to be righteous in his sight, or blameless in his sight, through the shed blood of his son. And we all know there's a way to come under that shed blood and stay under it, and that's by keeping the commandments. Go ahead, brother. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. Verse 7. In that the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Go ahead. And that, none of yourselves, it is the gift of it God. It is the gift of God. Because God loved us when we were still sinners. That's all that is. It's that grace. We didn't die when we should have. Go ahead, brother. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And it's not about works. You can't work your way into the kingdom. You're saved by grace because we should all be dead. We're all dead men and dead women walking. If not for the grace of God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And we are his workmanship, created in his son Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, unto good works. Unto good works. That were what, brother? Go ahead. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That God before ordained that we should walk in them. And we know where he did that. He started in the garden. Let's go to Psalms, the 95th chapter. Psalm 95. The only thing the Lord ever required of us. It wasn't sacrifice. It wasn't anything beyond um, our reach. It wasn't anything that we couldn't deal with. The only thing God ever required of us was obedience to his voice. Obedience to his voice. 
And we have that now through his written word. The simplicity of the gospel of Christ, sisters and brothers. Psalm 95, brethren, let's start this at verse 6. 95 and 6. Go ahead. Oh. <clears throat> O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Yes, sir. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Uh -huh. Today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your heart as in a provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. For he is our God, and we the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. He talks to you through his written word. That's why you should be daily in this written word, finding a time when it's convenient to you to be quiet and alone with no distractions. You can't just come and hear a Sabbath lesson and expect that to gain you salvation. You've got to be in his word on a regular basis, sisters and brothers, because otherwise you will harden your heart when you hear his voice. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Sisters and brothers, they were with him watching these miracles daily, hearing his voice. His angel was in the wilderness leading and guiding them. What more did they need? And they hardened their hearts. You expect to just come to a Sabbath class and be straight with God? Quit playing with yourselves. You can't just go to class and listen to what I say and run with that as gold. you got to prove everything I tell you and teach you from up here. And we're going to show you how you do that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have, n and they have not known my ways. How do you not know his ways when he's there amongst you? He even went as far as to say, when you have a bowel movement, bury it. So when I'm checking on you and walking amongst you, I won't step in it. And you hardened your hearts? This is an example of how not to be, sisters and brothers. One more verse, bro. Verse 11. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord always gives a physical for a spiritual example. They didn't enter into the promised land because of disobedience. What happens when the day of judgment comes and you stand before God? Are you going to enter that day of rest? Are you just a Sabbath keeper? Or you go home and on the end of the Sabbath and hang your white robe up on the hook and cover it with plastic until the next Sabbath? <laughs> Not the way it's supposed to be, sisters and brothers. Let's go to Exodus, the 31st chapter. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. It's all about obedience to his voice, sisters and brothers. Let's listen for his voice in the next couple of scriptures and see how he would have us conduct ourselves. Exodus 31, and we're going to start it in verse 13, brother. 31 and 13. And this is the Lord speaking unto Moses. That's what it says in verse 12. Go ahead, brother. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you, Throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. Sabbaths, what a plural. This is all. This is the weekly Sabbath and all the high holy days, the feast days, the new moon days. Whether or not it's a day like the Sabbath or not, I don't know. But it's for one thing is for sure. It says to gather on that day. Okay? So that's the Sabbaths that the Lord is talking about. And he says it's a sign between him and us. Throughout all generations that we might know it's him that does sanctify or sets us apart from other people. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. For whosoever doth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. You don't know what that means and you're listening to this lesson? You're doing good by listening to this lesson. Just keep coming back on the Sabbath and listening. And start putting it into practice. And the Lord will open your eyes. Verse 15, bro. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Uh -huh. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doth doeth any work in the Sabbath days, he shall surely be put to death. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. 
for a perpetual covenant. So now the Lord said you'll keep all the high days, everything that he considers a Sabbath day, and then he goes into the weekly Sabbath and tells us how to conduct ourselves, and then says that this is throughout their, through all generations for a perpetual covenant, or forever. It's a covenant within the covenant, sisters and brothers. Go ahead, bro. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. And I got news for you here. You take hold of the covenant of the great God of Israel, you are now Israel. The only Israel that matters. Spiritual Israel that's taken hold of that covenant. The book even says that the physical Israel, not all are they Israel that are of Israel. Because you've got to take hold of this covenant to take that adoption, sisters and brothers. Otherwise, you just a Jake. You Jacob. Go ahead, brother. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Uh -huh. Verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of the communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Tables of stone written with the finger of God. This is where you get that term, etched in stone. It can't be changed. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. And brother, let's pick this up at verse 12. We're going to read through 14, 12 through 14. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 12. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto you, out of the midst of the fire, ye heard the voice of, wor of the words, but saw no similitude, only... You heard a voice. You know what that's like, sisters and brothers? We were joking about this a little bit earlier. That's like this. You hear the voice, but you don't see nothing. Oh, there I am. You didn't see nothing. You heard a voice. That was it. God didn't come down on the mountain and reveal himself to you. You saw the lightning. You heard the thunders and the sound of the trumpet getting louder and louder. And then you heard a voice. That was it. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. And he declared unto you... His covenant. He declared unto you his covenant. This is God. Go ahead. Which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Ten commandments, the covenant that he wrote with his finger, etched it in stone. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in a land whither. You go over to possess it. So the Lord gave them the Ten Commandments, and then he gave them statutes and judgments and laws that explained what those Ten Commandments meant. So there was no doubt they knew exactly what those Ten Commandments meant. It included the dietary law. It included the cleanliness law. It included all these other statutes and judgments that the Lord gave. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. And brother, let's start this off in verse 11. Ezekiel 20 and verse 11. We're going to read two verses. Go ahead, bro. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. I gave them my statutes. And showed them my judgments, this is the Lord talking, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Talking by the pen of Ezekiel, this is his voice, his written word. That if a man do, he shall live in them. Go ahead. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. So now we just got done reading something, basically the same thing back in Moses, right, brother? Yes, sir. And now this is Ezekiel. And the Lord says in his written word, which is his voice, by the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter of fact established. So we've got the fact, what the covenant is, it's a bunch of statutes and judgments and commandments and laws and Sabbath day and all the other feast days and all that, all combined into one. Let's continue. Now, when you understand this, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. When you understand what the covenant is, and how the Lord's given you all these commandments, statutes, and judgments. They're not all pertaining to all of us. It's written for mankind. Of course, you've got children, you've got women, you've got childbirth, you've got unclean by issue, unclean by uh, matrimony. You've got all kinds of other little things. Some of them pertain to the, to the man, some of them to the women, some of them to the children. But the ones that pertain to you, 
when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Galatians 3 and 1 verse, brother, verse 11. Go ahead. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident uh -huh. for the just to live by faith. No man is justified or cleared of guilt by the law in the sight of God, so it is evident for the just shall live by faith or by belief. Let's go to Habakkuk, the second chapter. Another place that says, as it is written, the just shall walk by faith. Or something similar to that. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2. And one verse. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2. I'm not ashamed to admit it, sisters and brothers. I got my cheat sheet, it's got every book, and it's got the page numbers for my Bible. And when I can't find a place, sometimes I gotta go to that. I just, I don't know, maybe I'm too dexlexic or whatever to memorize the books of the Bible. My children could do them, but I can't. So that's how I get around not being able to find a page. Or I used to have to go all the way to the front of the book and look for the page number. Now I got it in front of me. But anyway, Habakkuk 2, little tricks of the trade. Habakkuk 2. And verse 4. 2 and 4, brother. Go ahead. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. But the just shall live by his faith. It's quoted three or four times in the New Testament. It always says the just shall live by faith. You go to where it was written, it says the just shall live by his faith. Not by his pastor's faith. Not by his elder's faith. By his faith. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Of course, we understand, like I said in the beginning, a wife and a husband and the children with the parents. We understand that. And we're talking about individuals to salvation, sisters and brothers, those that are old enough to have the understanding of what they need to do. 1 Corinthians 1, let's deal with that, thus the pastor say it. Whether it be a Sunday preacher and people don't want to hear about the Sabbath or whatever, or whether it be a Sabbath teacher at some of our classes and how some of the congregation can get so caught up in their fever and their zeal that instead of standing by the word of God, they stand by what their pastor says. Not right. It's wrong. It's at the time more than more times than not. It's not a conscious thing. I've had my pastors Reprove me when I started getting a little, putting them too high on a pedestal and go, whoa, whoa, man. Take a step back and chill, brother. I'm just a man, too. Praise God for the lesson. Learn from it. Okay? Let's look at 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 11, brother. Go ahead. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of uh huh. That there are contentions among you. Oh man, not that. The congregation? For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe. That's just a particular meeting place where saints were gathering. That there are contentions among you. And brothers and sisters, there's always going to be, but it's not supposed to be that way. And if you're guarding your heart, it won't be that way. But you've got to guard your heart because Satan will creep in. That spirit of this world will creep in if you're not guarding and leading your heart. So we got contentions in the house of Chloe. Go ahead, brother. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Sisters and brothers, that's following what the teacher says. Oh, well, Paul this, and this guy that, and, and brother Bob this. And, well, what about with brother Eric? He told me. Instead of learning... And rightly dividing. And we're going to show you how to do that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Uh-huh. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Is Christ divided? No, he's not. One spirit. One body, one spirit. Was Paul crucified for you? Absolutely not. He's standing there preaching. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? From what I can read, nobody was. I pray you weren't baptized in any other name than the name of Messiah. Go ahead, brother. 
I thank God that I was baptized, none of you, but Prychus and Gaius. Uh-huh. Gaius. Verse 15. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. So Paul set them straight. Go, wait a minute, man. Why are you listening? Basically, he's telling them, why are you listening to what the pastor says? You're supposed to be listening to what thus saith the Lord. And here's the way these brothers are supposed to be treating each other. And we're coming right back um, to 1 Corinthians, but first let's go to 1 Peter, the third chapter. We're going to read one verse. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, and we're going to read one verse, brother, verse 15. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15. Go ahead, brother. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Or set him apart in your hearts from everything else. A lot of people don't realize, sisters and brothers, is everything that you do and say should be done with the thought in your heart, is it pleasing to my God? Everything, every step you take, every move you make. Well, that's a song somewhere, isn't it? And like, like the song says, he said, I'll be watching you. Go ahead and continue, brother. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you for a reason. You a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. With meekness and fear. These brothers are supposed to be rightly dividing with meekness and fear. Oh, Paul taught me. Well, you know, Crispus or Gaius taught me. Well, let's see. Oh, and if they start really rightly dividing, they're going to see they're probably on the same page. Everybody brings a message differently, but it's the same message. If they're bringing it straight out of the word of God. Them brothers had no reason to bring it on any, anything twisting a scripture. Paul would have surely said they were twisting scripture. Stay away from them. I could teach this lesson. Brother Eric could stand up and teach it differently next Sabbath. And Brother Bob could stand up and teach it differently the Sabbath after. And that brother over there could teach it differently the Sabbath after. With the same set of scriptures. But it's not going to change the context of the truth that's in them. It's not about following after somebody, sisters and brothers. It's about following what thus saith the Lord. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians, this time the third chapter. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. A little better than halfway done, and I haven't hit the halfway mark on an hour yet. Praise God in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1, brother. 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. Go ahead. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes uh -huh. in Christ. Go ahead. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither yet now you are able. Now why is Paul saying this? You're not able to bear this. All I'm teaching you is milk. We understand what that means. Some of it. Milk is the easy precepts to be understood. Okay? Meat is when you have to really get in there and divide and discern the scriptures to get to the answer. But it's still, it's, the answer is all absolute, though. When it's written in God's word, scripture interprets scripture. You just got to dig in a little bit. You got to know some of the basic milk precepts to be able to go after the meat. And Paul won't teach them meat because he's using righteous judgment and he's saying they can't handle the meat. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Yes, sir. For you, for you are yet carnal, for whereas... There is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Uh -huh. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are ye not carnal? Here it goes again. I'm of Paul. Apollos taught me. I had one congregation talking about another congregation, saying that that pastor was leading their congregation down to, down the gate to, to the gate of hell over a simple little dispute on a doctrine of a feast day. And they're both keeping a feast. Oh, I'm a Paul. Oh, I'm a Apollos. Come on, sisters and brothers. Quit following what thus saith the pastor and start digging in and start seeing what thus saith the master. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe. All they did was teach you the truth and get you to a point where you could start looking at and keeping the commandments of God. Getting you rooted so you can start chasing the Lord on your own. Go ahead, brother. Even as the Lord gave to every man. Verse 6. Uh -huh. I have planted, Apollos watered, 
but God gave the increase. And so uh, Paul planted and Apollos came afterwards and he was teaching. He added on to that teaching that Paul did, so he watered. But God's the one that gives the increase, sisters and brothers. I don't have a message to give anybody. I don't have a reward or a punishment. In fact, I got a punishment coming if I'm not bringing this straight without adding or taking away. God is the one that grants the increase. Let's continue. Let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter. Romans, the 14th chapter. Romans 14. Romans 14. Romans 14 and one verse. Verse 5, brother. 14 and 5. Go ahead. What man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Because what does it say in verse 23? We read it earlier. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Not just about one day over another. And this isn't talking about like a lunar Sabbath over a regular Sabbath day. You got God's Sabbath day, and then you got some man made doctrine out there. And we've already done a lesson on it. I'm not talking out of turn. I proved that with the scriptures. Bob, my brother Bob and I did a lesson on that a, a week or two back. So I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about if it's not a faith, it's sin. If you believe one way and another brother believes another way and he's off doing it one way, and you're fellowshipping with him in the same congregation or whatever, because he does it one way doesn't mean you got to do it that way. If you're fully convinced in your heart, and it's absolute, not like keeping a calendar as according to what you use as a new moon, that's not absolute. Although I believe it is because there's only one scripture that calls a new moon, and that's the uh, 81 and verse 3. Psalm 81 and 3 calls it the full moon. But I'm not going to contend over that anyway. Whether or not you're keeping conjunction or sliver, be fully persuaded and keep that conjunction or sliver. Or, if you have to make a compromise, do it without setting a stumbling block on things that are gray areas. But on things that are absolute, like say, you're put in a position where a ham dinner is put in front of you. You refuse that because that's absolute. We shouldn't be going against God's cleanliness and dietary laws. But you've got to be fully persuaded in your heart. An example, a congregation keeps the eighth day as a feast day on tabernacles. The Lord says feast one through seven. He calls a high day on the first day and a high day on the seventh day. I mean, I'm sorry, the eighth day. But he says the feast days one through seven. And the eighth day is a solemn assembly, a holy convocation. Some congregations see that differently, that it should be a feast day. If you're convicted in your heart that it's not a feast day, you don't go feast that day. You go, you do the lesson, and you get out of there. You don't partake in the food. Now you're living according to your conviction, not what does say at the pastor in the congregation. And there's no waves that everyone's happened. If you get to a point where this some congregation is just so far out in left field, and you're seeing things completely different, then that's the Lord telling you to get out of there. And a lot of people that I know have come through Sunday worship that way, where they came into the truth and they had to leave that congregation. You can't sit in a place that's filled with folly and put up with that folly without calling yourself a partaker of that folly. And there's scripture to back that up. There's one in Proverbs we were just reading yesterday or the day before, today or whatever it was. We've been in the, in the book every time all the three of us get together so much we don't even remember what we're chasing. But anyway, let's continue. You have to be fully convinced in your heart. You have to live according to your faith. You have to walk in your faith, not someone else's. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. Oh, that's a nice breeze there. He's blowing that fan like that. 1 Thessalonians 5, it's a little warm in here today. This kind of caught us by surprise, this beautiful weather the Lord has given us. Yes, sir. 1 Thessalonians 5, <coughs> excuse me, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20, brother, 5 and 20. Despise not prophesied. Despise not prophesied. In other words, 
someone's teaching, listen to what they got to say. You'll see right away if it's folly, and if it's not, you might learn something. Despise not prophesying. Go ahead, brother. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Mm -hmm. Verse 22, abstain from all appearances of evil. So the Lord says, prove all things. Hold to that which is good. Stay away from even looks like it's evil. How do we do this? Go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians 4. We have to prove all things in order for us to be convicted in our hearts, sisters and brothers. I can't let this brother or sister prove something for me and go, oh, yeah, that's great, that's absolute, woo, let's do it. I've got to prove it for myself because I have to walk according to my faith. At first, when you're young in the Word, yes, you lean on the elders and everyone while you're learning. Yeah, I mean, let's use some common sense here, okay? But it comes to time where you're sitting there and you've learned and now you're starting to see things a little bit differently. Because the Lord is always going to give everyone an individual conviction. You're never going to find a congregation where you sit down and you agree 100% on everything. Ephesians 4 and 22, brother, go ahead. That you put off the concerning the former Ephesians, conversation. Ephesians 4. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. Yes, sir, I'm at the end of where I wanted to go. 22, I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. That you put off the concerning the former conversation. The old man was uh -huh. corrupt according to, to the deceitful lust. That you put up concerning the former conversation, the old man, the way you used to live, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Go ahead, brother. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Go ahead. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And after you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, you put on the new man, which yes, after sir. God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's go over to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We're going to read one verse. How do you renew your mind? Come on, man. I thought you just got done saying, Brother Paul, that this gospel is easy to understand. Simplicity of the gospel of Christ. 5 and 26. Brother, go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You renew your mind by the washing of water with the word of God. Let's continue. Let's go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John 4. So you do it with the word of God. Sure. You do it with, well, how do you do it with the word of God, Brother Paul? You just read? Well, yeah, in a sense. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. And verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. What happens when you're full of the spirit? You prophesy, you teach. So he's saying, try the teachings, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. How do you try the teachings? You don't despise them. You listen with readiness of mind, and you listen to these, and you see if they're true. Let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter. There's a way that you see if they're true. You're listening. You're hearing it. Hey, sounds good. Tickles your ear a little bit, maybe. Man, wait, I never heard that before. That sounds really good. And you're listening. And that preacher's going off, and oh, my goodness, what a sermon. That Bible study was off the chain. So you've received it with readiness of mind. Acts 17, brother, and pick it up at verse 10. 17 and 10. Go ahead. And the brother immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh -huh. And what did they do? Go ahead. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Uh-huh. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They did not despise prophesying. Go ahead. And searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And they searched the scriptures daily yes, to see if what the teachings they were hearing were true. Sisters and brothers, I'm not denying it. Absolutely, when you first come into the word of God, you're going to rely on your teacher. You can't believe in God unless you know who he is. And you can't know who he is. Unless someone teach you. 
And in order to be taught that hearing, according to Romans 10, has to come from the Word of God. So you're taught in the Word of God by a teacher that has some understanding. But it doesn't stop there. We read in 1 Corinthians about what Paul was saying about stopping there. He said not to do that. You hear it, and then you got to go into the book and prove it. And when you start doing that, you're going to see a lot of times your teacher misspeaks from the podium. I do all the time. And when I started proving what my teacher was saying, I saw him misspeak left and right. But he was still bringing it straight. He wasn't adding or taking away from it. But once I got to a certain point where I started reading on my own and I'm getting them lessons over and over again, I started seeing some things. That was my persuasion. Wasn't right or wrong, it was my persuasion. We were both servants of the Most High God, walking, keeping God's commandments. It's just I started seeing some things a little different. That's a natural spiritual growth, sisters and brothers. Don't trip. Let's go to John, the 17th chapter. Oh, wait, verse 12. Finish verse 12, brother. I'm sorry. Therefore, many of them believed, also honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Therefore, many of them believed through the word of God, through the hearing of the teaching, and proving it with the scripture. Now let's go to John, the 17th chapter. John, the 17th chapter. John 17. John 17. It's all about the word of God, sisters and brothers. This is Jesus. He was praying to the Father for the disciples. And then he turned around. He started praying for us. For us today. John 17, one verse. Verse 20, brother. Go ahead. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me. Through their word. Through their word. Through the disciples' word. Through what we're reading right here. John 17 and 20. I know. That's, I'm sorry, brother. I, I, it sounded like I wanted him to read it again. What I'm saying is, through these very words, John 17, chapter and verse 20, what Jesus is praying is that through these very words that are written here that we're reading, that we should believe on him through that. And he's praying that we will. That we'll get understanding and knowledge and wisdom. Go to Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. So what does all this do, Brother Paul? You're telling me i got to prove this, i got to prove that, I can't listen to my pastor and all this. What does all this do, sisters and brothers? Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to read one verse. This is Peter. We're going to read one verse, verse 40. Acts 2 and verse 40, brother. Go ahead. When you get there. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from the untoward gener generation. Everything we've been reading and everything that we've been talking about today is about saving yourselves, sisters and brothers, from the rest of this world, this untoward generation. Can't anybody save you? Your pastor's doctrine, your brother or sister's doctrine. None of that can save you. When you get old enough to be a child that's out on your own and accountable for yourself, your parents' doctrine then can't save you. When you become a widow, God forbid you become a widow or a widower, especially a, 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 a woman whose husband dies because now her head is Christ. What your husband had you walk in can't save you. You have to walk in your faith accountable to God by his standards. And that is the only way you can gain right back to the tree of life. Go to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews 3. And brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 7. Hebrews 3 and verse 7. Go ahead. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in a provocation, in a day of temptation in the world. Uh-huh. Verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Paul's teaching the same thing that Christ taught. Which is teaching the same thing that the God of Israel gave to Moses. 
Teach you the same thing, sisters and brothers. When you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Paul's teaching the same thing. He never brought anything different. He's always teaching about obedience to God and keeping those sure. commandments and that it started with the ten and that it carried over to all the commandments, statutes, and judgments. And he's telling you now, under the new covenant, when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Uh huh. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And Paul's going to go out and he's going to tell you, you better take heed and obey that voice so that at the appointed time, you'll enter into the kingdom of Christ. When Messiah brings his kingdom and you can live and reign with him for a thousand years. Let's continue. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter. John, the fifth chapter. Let's see what Jesus says. Let's see what the Messiah says. John 5. John 5. And we're going to pick this up at verse 37. 5 and 37. Go ahead, brother. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So Messiah is saying, you, you've never heard, seen the Father at any time. You've never heard his voice. Go ahead, brother. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom ye have sent, ye have sent him ye believe not. And you have not his word abiding in you because the one that he sent, you don't believe. He bore witness of me and sent me. And you don't believe me is what Jesus is saying. Go ahead, brother. Sir the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and he's saying search the scriptures Amen. for in the scriptures you think you have eternal life well my pastor says this my pastor said that look what else my pastor said and you don't always come off like that but you can see it's scripted and you could even hear your pastor teach it on the tape you just listened to because you're even saying all the jokes and everything your pastor said Search the scriptures, for in the scriptures you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures testify of me, is what Christ is saying. And the scriptures said that he's that prophet like unto Moses. And that you're responsible to obedience to his voice, not your pastors, yes, not your elders, not your brother or your sister. Go ahead, brother. Verse 40, and ye have... And ye will not come to me that you might have life. You will not come to me that you might have life, eternal life. Last scripture for today, Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Leviticus 20. And brother, we're going to read 7 and 8. Leviticus 20 and verse 7. Go ahead, brother. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Set yourselves apart, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Go ahead, brother. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them, because I am the Lord that doth set you apart. Do his statutes and keep his statutes the way he said to keep them. Sisters and brothers, if you're ever confused on what doctrine is what, take it to the law. The Lord says we don't add or take away from his law and the law will make all things clear. Seek wise counsel, absolutely. Listen to your teachings from your pastors and your elders, absolutely. But prove everything by God's standard, by his word. So sisters and brothers, that's the convictions of the heart lead to salvation. As always, I appreciate the opportunity to stand before you and rightly divide God's word. And I hope somebody got something from this lesson. Amen.